What's up guys, this is it. The iPhone 8 Plus is here with its legendary A11 CPU, the world's strongest processor in a smartphone to date. That is an incredible title to hold, and I wanted to compare it to Apple's second best, the iPhone 7 Plus with the A10. So the iPhone 8 Plus is a great phone, been using it for a day already, wireless charging is awesome, louder speakers, true tone display, new colors, it's a great phone. But what really shines is what you can't see under the hood. So in this video, we're gonna be going through a variety of tests, starting with a real world test, and then going from there into synchronized speed tests. I just wanna see how much faster is this versus the iPhone 7 Plus. Inside, we have the same amount of RAM, a new process, 10 nanometers versus 14 and 16 for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus series, but we don't really know the specs for the cores. It's a six core bionic chip. Regardless, Apple claims it is 70% faster for the top tier CPU chips, the fastest ones. So let's see how that compares in the real world test. Now we're going to start off synchronized here by loading a simple Snapchat. And I tried to do this as best as possible, but you guys may notice a couple discrepancies. This isn't perfect, but it will give us a good indication of which is faster and in what areas. So both are neck and neck at this point. The iPhone 8 Plus off the bat, I noticed, has a little difficulty loading certain applications. It takes a little bit longer for certain things. And don't be worried. Don't let that put you off from buying one because the iPhone 8 Plus is a brand new device. Most apps will receive updates over the next few days, even weeks, to make sure that the compatibility with these new devices is ensured. And the Apple A11 chip still has time to get optimized with iOS updates, so this is likely to change in the future. You'll notice that it's neck and neck at this point. Both are still at the same spot as one another. And at this point where we're loading larger applications, games, I notice that the iPhone 8 Plus starts to hang a little bit. It doesn't load them as fast as the iPhone 7 Plus. And I definitely don't think it's an issue of processing power here. I mean, Lord knows there is enough on the iPhone 8 Plus overkill, the fastest smartphone ever, but it doesn't know how to utilize that properly. So I think with the updates, it's definitely gonna be getting better and you will notice a difference in the future. But here, the iPhone 7 Plus does take the lead. It's already on Netflix, going to Uber, basically one application ahead of the iPhone 8 Plus this entire time. I mean, literally like clockwork here. And believe it or not, I actually had to refilm this scene several times just because iOS 11 was making apps crash and compatibility issues. It was really, really frustrating to film this video. So uh, do take that into consideration. iOS 11 slows them down in general. But at this point, the iPhone 8 Plus leapt ahead for just a second before the iPhone 7 Plus caught up. And this is a minute and 30 second 4K, uh, 30 frames per second video. So nothing too special, something you're gonna see fairly commonly now, and we're importing them, compiling them, and exporting the very same video. This is where it kind of struck me, wow, the iPhone 7 Plus is so well optimized. The same video for the same compilation and export, it was faster. It's already saving the video while the iPhone 8 Plus is still compiling that video. And that's a very interesting thing to see. And I certainly hope you guys don't take this test the wrong way. The iPhone 8 Plus is the faster phone. It is proven, it is there, the processing power, everything. It's just a test like this is basically testing optimization, animation speed, all of that combined. Anyways, the iPhone 7 Plus has finished with round one at a staggering two minutes and 29 seconds. So pretty in line with uh, past results that I've had in the speed tests. And going back into the applications, you can see that everything is still preloaded exactly where I left it. So I have no issues here like I had on the Galaxy S8 where everything started to reload. And I highlight this because take note, the iPhone 8 Plus at two minutes and 49 seconds, when it starts its round two, has these issues. You'll notice that in some of the applications, they start needing to be reloaded. And the camera had some issues taking some pictures. And the Google Maps app crashed on me. Those compatibility issues again. Photoshop Express did not save where it was. So I had to go and export that once again. And uh, Minecraft completely reset. It wasn't where I left it mid game. For whatever reason, maybe it was the 4K video compilation that cleared out the app switcher, started uh, deleting apps in it, and I had to reload them. Mario Run got reset as well. So this is a very interesting thing to see on an iPhone. I was always proud of memory utilization on the iPhones. It looks like the iPhone 8 Plus just doesn't have it. Uh, what the iPhone 7 Plus has, that optimization. Once again, Asphalt again, needed to be reloaded. This is super surprising for me to see. And moving on to Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, it also needed to be reloaded. So all of the heavy applications 
did need to be reloaded in the app switcher. Again, very surprising to see from Apple, but something in the future that will be fixed will be resolved. From here on out, I noticed all of the lighter applications, stuff like Zynga Poker, Netflix, Uber, everything was still where I left it. Those did not get reloaded. It was the heaviest usage applications that in the background got cleared while exporting that 4K video. So this is the final result here. We've got four minutes and 10 seconds for the total result on the iPhone 8 Plus versus three minutes and two seconds on the iPhone 7 Plus. That is a full minute in between them. And round two, reloading the already loaded applications took much longer on the iPhone 8 Plus just because it started clearing those apps out. Something to consider maybe, but again, will be fixed in the future. Well, I never. A newer iPhone is slower than an older one, something I would have never predicted to actually happen. Now, we all know that's most likely probably because it's a new iPhone, it hasn't been optimized, it hasn't been fully taken advantage of all of the apps are for the existing iPhones and I don't blame it for being slower. It is not a slower phone. These apps are just not optimized for it. Anyways, I wanted to do a quick power down startup test here, see how long it takes the new iPhone to start up compared to the older one, both running the latest iOS 11.0 firmware at the time, the first one of the new iOS 11 line. Honestly, really buggy, really terrible battery life on my 7 Plus. So I'm um, not liking that, hopefully it gets better. Anyways, in three, two, one, and they are off. So these are completely different in terms of speed. This one is almost double the benchmarks of the iPhone 7 Plus. It is ridiculous just how incredibly powerful it is in the multi-core score. Anyways, we've got the flashing. Oh, wow, that was incredibly fast here. Oh my goodness, I did not expect that. And these are both the same capacity. So uh, there's no difference in the flash storage memory on these guys. That was so much faster than the iPhone 7 Plus, wow. All right, so uh, moving on, let's do some app launching here with the app switchers cleared so we can get a realistic idea of how these apps launch time-wise on both devices. Anyways, let's try over here with the camera, one, two, three. Uh, maybe a little bit faster on the 8 Plus, Instagram, one, two. Um, about the same there, Snapchat, one, two. Same in Google Maps, one, two. Actually loaded a little bit faster on the 8 Plus, Photoshop Express, one, two. There's a little delay when I click on them, look. Okay, this was faster on the 8 Plus. Let's try the export here, so one, two. Actually, exactly the same. That's an 8K image, by the way. So Minecraft, one, two. And uh, about the same there. Let's try loading the actual world. So two. And um, wow, definitely faster on the eight plus here, but this one showed up first. Hmm. Mario Run, one, two. And uh, think about the same. Oh, a little bit faster on the eight plus for the heavier game. Let's try Asphalt and about the same starting. And I'm not, I don't know what to expect from the bigger ones. Oh, this one did load it faster. Maybe the bigger, heavier games are gonna get loaded a little bit faster. That wasn't synced. I just wanna do uh, the actual loading of the game here synced on both devices. And here we go, start game. Grand Theft Auto, one with an actual loading bar. Actually, incredibly similar. Maybe just half a second to a second faster on the 8 Plus. Most apps do load faster on the 8 Plus. So that's super cool. Let's get some uh, benchmarks in here with Geekbench. Officially, we don't know what the processor spec is of the iPhone 8 Plus. Uh, this one says 2.06 gigahertz, but that's most likely the low end cores. And despite starting at the same time, looks like the iPhone 7 Plus is finishing up first here. And we've got a score of 6,003 and 3517. iOS 11 really brings out those lower core, multi-core scores, always getting above 6,000 now. Never would get that on iOS 10, which is cool. So uh, iPhone 8 Plus here finishing up with a monstrous 9,571 multi-core score and single core score of uh, 4,235. So I may have overspoke a little when I said double, but it is considerably higher than the iPhone 7 Plus over here. So really great scores. Not fully optimized yet, it will get better for sure. But let's go ahead and get a benchmark from N2 to go in. All right, so look at that N2 to benchmark. 189,000 near 190 versus 121. A considerable difference, about 
30% higher here. So next up, I wanna test out the fingerprint sensors on the lock screen, see how it is. All right, so with the screen off, here we go. Three, two, one, and it's exactly the same. I don't expect the difference because they are using the very same sensors here. Uh, read error on this one. All right, three, two, one, and with the screen on, whoa, weird animation bug there. With the screen on, one, two, three, exactly the same. So same second generation touch ID. It'll be more of a fight between face ID and touch ID, but this one is exactly the same. All right, guys, there it is. That is the ultimate speed test comparison of the iPhone 8 Plus to the iPhone 7 Plus. Are you guys surprised? Do you guys think this will change with time like I do? Are you optimistic about that? I'm very curious to see this because for me, this was a very shocking result to find. The iPhone 7 Plus is faster than the 8 Plus. What? Anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace.